Hi, my name is Leah Davis. The theorist that I'm going to be talking about today is Rudolf Dreykus. He um, had a medium teacher control approach um, and it was called logical consequences. So, in his uh, background, he was born in Austria in Vienna. He immigrated to the United States in 1937. Um, he became a psychiatrist and he was very influenced by the work of Alfred Adler who proponed um, individual psychology. Uh, Alf, er, Rudolf Dreykus um, was uh, interested in studying relationships and how they affect behavior. So that's a little bit about his background. <clears throat> As for his theory, he had three kind of major points. Um, first, he believed that students behave or misbehave out of a motivation to get recognized by their peers and to be accepted. Um, second, he believed that good discipline was not the same as punishment. He thought that um, giving discipline should not involve uh, making the student feel that their character is bad, just that their behavior needs to change. And so he, he really didn't think any form of punishment was a good approach. Uh, and his third, he thought that you need to give students responsibility. So the only way that they will learn how to be responsible is if you are giving them experiences that they can practice being responsible. And that includes for their own behavior. Okay, um, so he had four kind of major points about how to address um, misbehavior in the classroom. First, he said that you need to identify the goal of the misbehavior. So why is the student acting the way they do? And you have to look for signs about what they're doing. Um, Dreykus said that, Dreyker said that there was a few things um, that stood out. Students might be acting to gain attention, uh, to seek power, to look stronger than their peers, or uh, to seek revenge if they think something bad has happened to them. And they, they want to get back, um, or to display inadequacy. If they need help and they don't know how to show it, then they will act out. Um, and the reason that this is important is so that the, stu the students will become aware of why they are acting that way. So that's step one. Step two is to alter your reaction as a teacher to the misbehavior. This includes controlling your temper um, I think we've all been in a classroom where you, um, where the teacher just yells whenever something happens that they don't like, and so students become afraid of them, but it doesn't necessarily teach them responsibility. Um, and it might reinforce that behavior instead of changing it. So the second thing you can do is meet privately with the student to discuss how you're going to change that behavior. Um, and what, ask for the student's ideas on what they can do differently. The reason that you want to do this is so that you reinforce good behaviors and you're not giving them attention in the wrong kind of way. So the third step that he includes is to provide encouragement. And this is going on throughout the classroom as kind of a preventative way to encourage behavior and uh, discourage misbehavior. But also when you are giving discipline, you can tell students what they're doing right so that they um, have more confidence about how they are acting and how, what their role is in the classroom. And also if you acknowledge the good work they're doing so that they, uh, they feel competent. And the reason for doing this is so they understand what kind of behavior does lead to those positive results. Um, so it's not this mystery about what pleases the teacher, but they will know, I did that, so um, I know that this co positive consequence happened, and I know that will make my teacher happy. Uh, finally, the fourth step is to use logical consequences. And this is the biggest part of the theory, um, as you know, because it's called logical consequences as a theory. Um, the biggest idea is that they are directly related. And this doesn't mean that it's a natural consequence where um, if you touched a burning stove, then the natural consequence would be, oh, to take your hand off or you're going to get burned. Um, logical consequences are a little bit more complex. Um, they're something that the teacher and the parent uh, 
initiate, that they have fixed this consequence to this misbehavior, but it's in a logical way. Um, and it's not giving them an extra punishment that's not consistent. Um, you want to make it very clear what behaviors you're going to accept and not accept. And the second thing is that you need to give them choices. Um, you can tell them if you keep acting that way, you're choosing to get this consequence. Um, if you decide to change your misbehavior, then you will, will get to participate in the rest of um, our activities. So you're giving the student the choice to see that their behavior affects what happens to them. Um, and the main point of this is so that students learn responsibility for how they are interacting with other people. And so um, I just wanted to do a little demonstration to show how these four steps would work in a real situation. So I've asked Sydney to play the role of an elementary school student. So just have fun watching. <laughs> okay. All right, class, um, I need somebody to answer Teacher, I have a question, question on the board up here. Teacher, I have a question. I think, okay, Katie, how about you? Ms. Davis, I said I had a question. Okay, good job. Let's write that. All right, kids, you can go out to recess. Sydney, can you stay and talk with me for just a minute? Okay. So today in class, I loved how you were so excited about um, sharing your thoughts and your ideas with the class. And I know that you... Um, we're paying attention, and that was great. Um, but I did notice that you kind of wanted everyone to look at you and to get all the attention. Um, how do you think that, that, that we could change that behavior so you can participate? I don't know. Maybe I should just raise my hand and not shout. That's a good idea. I think if you will choose to be quiet while you're answering a question, that I will call on you. But if you decide to keep talking, then I can't call on you. So, okay, I want you to call on me, so I'll just raise my hand from now on. Okay, thank you. Run out to play. Good job. <laughs> okay, so that was definitely an ideal situation. The kid might not be as compliant, um, but we have the different steps. Um, first, I realized Sydney wanted attention, so instead of just giving it to her directly, I ignored it, so I didn't reinforce it and I wrote the answer from the other student. Um, second, I decided not to get mad right away. I, I knew that the, the behavior would change more quickly if I didn't react in a negative way. Um, providing encouragement. When I talked to Sydney individually, I told her the things that I liked about her behavior and about um, how she was acting in the classroom before I told her what needed to change. And we talked about different alternatives to this misbehavior. And finally, the logical consequence was that if she kept talking while she raised her hand, then she would not be able to be called on. But if she would be quiet while she raised her hand, then she would. And that's just logical. It directly goes with um, the misbehavior. And so that was just a little scenario to help you see it in action. And I, that's the end of logical consequences. Thank you.